like Nick actually cares what Jim Bob down in Louisiana thinks about his his the way that he talks what he's sitting here talking real slow. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of 1075 Chatter. Today's guest is one of our technicians, Nicholas Harrison, who is a volunteer firefighter and one of our emergency vehicle technicians. Let's dive in and listen. Nicholas, the biggest question that everybody has today is how much product do you use in your hair? And did you do it today this morning or just before you came in? I did it this morning. You did it this morning, so. And I even have a workout and you had a workout so and you went for a run and, and that's I what made run, and you yes. went for a run and that's why it's still up like that yes because you're that fast yes so the, and the other question is are you actually a volunteer firefighter i am because people don't believe that yes so the questions of the hour has so. been answered i am a volunteer firefighter and that's all we have for you today <laughs> no just kidding so nick why don't you tell us a little about yourself uh i am 26 years old something like that Something like that. You could lose counting after you turn five, right? Yeah. Uh, I started this interest industry in 2018, in October. Uh, I love camping, going hiking. I hike a lot. I don't know if you noticed on my shirt, show to Ireland. <laughs> so you started with us back in 2018, right? Yes. So that means you've been with us for five years. Yes. And we've seen you grow from a little pipsqueak up until the young man that you are today yep. and you've definitely uh, grown into the position that you've come into now you're a very valuable member of our team and we appreciate you Thank very you. much and uh, you definitely have uh, learned a lot of valuable experience and knowledge over the time so I think uh, what are some of your most uh, memorable I guess installs that you think you've done I uh, would say memorable would probably be my Bergen County EMS bus, the white one. The school bus or the, the school bus? The school bus that we transferred yeah, from the school that. bus to the EMS. That one, okay. Yeah. That one was. That one was during COVID, right? When we. I think that was before COVID. That one was that one. That okay, was like that before COVID. That was the one where we had to cut all the seat bolts out, and we were. Yeah. That one, okay. That was a fun time. Yeah. And then, which which one was? Where where do you felt like when you? Uh, what what do you feel like when you learned the most? Like project wise, where you felt like you you like hit like a turning point where you like felt like you were like excelling and you everything was like starting to click. Maybe it was two years into the job. Yeah. Just when I got pushed off to do my own thing. And let you run free. Run free and. Let you spread your wings like yep. the, the eagle that you are. I got pushed to uh, dip my max. <laughs> um, what do you think were some of your most uh, valuable experiences that you got, like learning? Like, how do you feel like you went getting into the industry? Like, what helped you learn uh, the skills that have helped you excel? Like, Honestly, it was all hands-on training. I did not go to college. Uh, I did go to high school, PCTI, and did electronics. I had a small background on electronics. But uh, I just basically, I'm a hands-on guy, and learning from other people uh, that are able to teach me mm -hmm. and just learning whatever I can. Because we have a lot of people that they always ask or we see them on the forums or whatnot. They're always asking how they get involved in the industry or whatnot. Like, because there's obviously there's certifications and whatnot that you could get. But and I feel that there's not a lot of applications sometimes that it, you can you can either you can go to college and get a certification or you go to school and get a certification but you know if you don't have the right people teaching you hands on and learn the right practices or habits you know it's not good with anything whether it's I don't think it's with any industry at all correct um, and if you know you have the right support system and stuff like that giving you the right tools or even the right supplies and things like that to do the install correctly I think is a big thing too to 
give you a, a better product or pushing you to do something better too is um, gives you more what's the right word to use I guess a to make you want to do a better install if you're just at a place that's just trying to push stuff out you know you're just there or they're paying you shop rate where you know they're paying you to get 10 cars out a week and they don't necessarily care what it looks like you're not necessarily trying to make it better or try to do it cleaner or you don't necessarily care about it where if you're worried about the vehicle that's going out the door or trying to do something different or make the customer happier you care about the product that's leaving out the door i think you get a little bit more invested into that install and you maybe are more in tune to looking outside the box to do things differently or do things better and i think that's where i think we try to foster that mm -hmm. that feelings for guys to want to bring new ideas into things and push our guys to do better installs totally and i i'm all these vehicles i build on even the ones that I'm working on now and the small ones that I still look at the build, I'm like, oh, I could do this a little more different. I could do this much more better because you're not going to do it correctly 100% every time. But you'll be able to, oh, you catch that next time, I'll do it this way so it's a lot easier or it's going to be a lot neater. Right. Always have room for improvement and always taking yep. – you know, taking criticism the right way and, you know, helping other people do better and, um, you know, helping the team out to do, you know, inclusively better to make sure that everybody's, you know, on the same page and trying to do the same, the same level of work, the same quality, doing things the same way mm -hmm. is obviously, you know, the hardest part when you're doing, you know, one-off work all the time and not having a production cookie cutter type of thing. Yeah, and I do have to give credit to the senior guys that trained me, definitely, because if they didn't train me the way they did, then I don't think I would be able to teach others how I build and how they built, and mm -hmm. it's basically a copy from them and just trying to improve it, not saying they're wrong or anything, but we're able to improve ourselves every day. Right, because if uh, complacency is with any industry, it kills Yes. Like if you're stuck on your the way of doing things the way you've always done it and you're not interested in improving things, you're going to get passed over by somebody that is willing to push themselves to do it better. Yes. And that goes with whether it's this industry, another industry, the fire service, or anything else. You want to be constantly improving yourself because that keeps you aware and mentally you know, in it and just not kind of sitting back and along for the ride. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, willing to you know, do do more, you're, you know, maybe a little bit more in tune to what you're doing and you're not kind of just going through the motions type of thing. Yeah. You're maybe hustling a little bit more to be working harder, things like that. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your, you know, outside of work with your, your volunteer, your, your time in at the volunteer fire. So I joined Prospect Park Fire Department seven years ago that would be 2016 right after i got out of high school graduated um, and two years later i also joined a second department in Hilden. currently i am a captain in frost park and just a black helmet in Hilden. Uh, where after straight after high school i worked variously different jobs and i worked with this family that would go to calls all the time and i would jump in the truck to the call and then wait at the firehouse while they're doing what they got to do and I fell in love with it. So your family doesn't have any background? In I have a couple family members passed on that have but in my generation I was the first. Okay so nobody grew you didn't grow up going to the firehouse or nope. anything like that just something nope. later in your life? Okay. Yes. So what about the volunteer fire service attracted you off the bat and then what kind of keeps you you coming back for more it's helping out the community I, I just love it there's a special feeling when I get called out to motor vehicle accident or any call and just being able to help help someone and uh, it just 
triggers something that makes makes me feel like I'm doing something worthy. So obviously, you know, we've been getting very busy as a company, and you have uh, taken a, a big step and helping fill in for me in a lot of instances, um, doing showcases and uh, helping out our marketing team with doing videos. Um, obviously, that's a big step for anybody. Nobody likes being in front of the camera in general. I don't think I like doing it. There's a, there's a <laughs> video, you know, of me behind the ca behind the camera from like 15 years ago, and it's the most awkward thing you've ever <laughs> seen in the entire world of me videotaping myself. And you know, I don't think um, anybody likes it. Well, how did you? Uh, how does how does it make you feel like looking back at yourself? You know, doing videos and stuff like that. You, do you? Is it weird, like it, looking at yourself on yeah, camera? Yeah, it, it is funny because I'll be, I'll look up because I, I want to see how much views we've got on yeah. on some videos, and it'll just pop up in my voice. I'm like, uh, yeah. But it's kind of nice because honestly, I've I do have a speech impediment, and I have trouble talking. But it's nice to see that I'm able to get in front of a camera and. I don't care. You I know give, what? I mess up. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Right. I give you it's a all, lot of credit. It's for all that. fun and games. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you have a. You give you a lot of credit for you know putting yourself out there for that and not caring what other people think because the only people that care are the people that that care about you. Yes. So I mean, and it, it's definitely uh, you know, it's definitely uh, it says something about your character that you do, uh, you're willing to. Uh, you know, put yourself out there because there's a lot of people out there. We say the keyboard warriors that <laughs> like to, you know, you know, pound away at their keyboards and pick on people that aren't standing there in front of them yeah. and put the other people down because you know them sitting in their parents' basement while mom warms up a three-week-old meatloaf for them while they're rubbing uh, Cheetos off on their pants. Um, Um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely something interesting. I mean, I, I know, I'm sure your girlfriend probably sits there and probably likes to make oh, fun of you while, while, you know, sitting there and your, your voice pops up and yeah. gives you a dirty look or something <laughs> like that. But, it's because you're so stupid. It's, uh... <laughs> but I mean, it's definitely, it's, I mean, it's a big step for you to be putting yourself out there and, you know, doing the videos and things like that. And I mean, it helps these guys out a lot because obviously my time is limited because I'm such a big movie star. <laughs> <laughs> in my own life, in my own small, little, tiny pig peon <laughs> world. Um, no, but I mean, for you to do that and not care, I mean, there's people that that don't, have a speech impediment that won't get in front of a camera because they don't want it. They're, they're more worried about what other people think yeah. of them and whatnot. And, you know, you're out there doing it and you don't really care what other people think. I mean, you... if they want to pay my bills, sure, I'll care. <laughs> but, I mean, keep watching, keep, keep watching, keep watching, keep talking, getting more views and getting the company videos more views and comments in the algorithm because. Any exposure is good exposure, and you know yes, you're getting us in front of more people and selling more vehicles and bringing more people to watch our stuff and see your videos and sells more vehicles and makes the shop busier. It makes everybody more money. <laughs> have you hit, have you have you reached the uh, the stardom yet where people will recognize you? Like, are you Nick I, from 1075? I have. You have. I have. I have. Uh, we were at a uh, flower sale and a kid comes up to me. He goes, do you work for 1075? I was like, yeah. He's like, I've seen your videos. I'm like, do you like them? He's like, yes. That's awesome. And then he completed, he wanted to go on the trucks. So I was like, yep, we'll take you on the engine. And of course, he, he wanted the siren and the air horns and federal Q and everything. <laughs> so it was, it was nice. Guy always finds it funny when we're at shows or something like that, I think. And people at the trade shows, you get all the different people recognizing things and just like, 
I was sitting at the car wash the the other day, and the kids, the kids were there's two like kids in high school that were looking back and forth at me, and they're like, "Are you the guy on TikTok that puts the lights in the police cars?" And I was like. <laughs> Larry and I were walking through through the Prudential Center with like on a tour during a Devils game and like there was some dude from upstate New York that was literally like we'd never met before and, and he's like I think that was Ryan from 1075 and I and Larry's like are you kidding me right now and I'm like I turned around and I'm like hey how are you doing let's he's like he's like can we really go anywhere without and I bet you he had a smile on your face when oh, you yeah. did he was he was he was like and the guy's like I went over and said hello to the guy and asked him where he was from. And then we were, my wife and I were looking at, um, uh, we we're meeting with a contractor and we were walking back to the car. And as we were walking back to this car, another car pulled up and it was the homeowner's brother who was from, I think he was from Prospect Park or whatnot, but he moved to like Lake George or something mm -hmm. like that. And he was, um, he saw me get in, in, in the car and he started walking over like, and my wife's like, what's going on here? Like, like, I don't know. And he rolled down the window. He's like, he's like, oh, you're Ryan from 10 city five. And I'm like, and my wife's looking at me like, Are you like it's Sunday at like 12 o'clock. And he's like, oh, I'm from like Prospect Park or something like that. And like, he's like, oh, we used to live down here. He's like, oh, we love all your videos. My wife's like, really? Like, she's like, what are we doing? Like. We were walking down the boardwalk. I was like, I'm like, I don't know. Okay. Movie Can't wait star. to uh, go down the boardwalk this year. This year and see what happens? Yeah. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Maybe we won't be walking sideways this year. I'll make sure I put a marker in my pocket so I can make signatures if you guys want. <laughs> we'll just not have what happened last year. What was that? You forgot already, didn't you? I did. You Because you weren't. You were walking like this down the boardwalk. Huh? Nothing new. <laughs> so one of the things is, obviously, you know, they ask you where you see yourself in a couple of years, but we're not going to put you out that far because, you know. I can't make it till next week. You can't I make mean, it till it's you, like... you forgot what you had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you're going to leave, you can tell us now. If we're going to ask you where you see yourself in, you know, a year, you can tell us six months. We'll tell you to leave right now. But, <laughs> um, you know, what do you you see yourself in? It doesn't have to, have to be work-related. But, you know, you have plans for traveling, anything like that? Like, My plan is definitely to travel a little more than what I used to. Uh, I got a new camper for my truck, pop-up camper. So mm -hmm. I kind of want to get that going. Uh, with you got some other plans for somebody? No, not yet. <laughs> to a house, we're looking, but looking into a house. So good for you. So try to work on that. Keep watching those videos. Yeah, Haters. keep watching those videos so Haters. I can buy a house. <laughs> Donations are welcome. <laughs> Donations are welcome. <laughs> but uh, you get a start a feet finder page. Anybody like feet? <laughs> so you said you started being a volunteer firefighter right out of high school? Yes. How, so you were 18 or yes. were you 17? 18. 18. Yep. So you started out right when you could. Yeah. Did they, did they have a junior program or no? No. No, okay. So you started when you were 18, so right when you could pretty much go I didn't know it about the fi volunteer fire department until I was 18, Until you were honestly. 18, okay. So you got right into it when you were 18 yep. and you went – all into it and you got all your stuff done and I went all in I, I had a good mentor that uh, passed away a couple of years ago okay he assistant chief for Plus Park and he got my dr my drive to go and it was something that he he helped out that I love that's how I fell in love with it mm -hmm. and how he act and it was just he was all service so that's what kind of gave you, you know, everything and, you know, made you want to be a volunteer and, yeah. you know, showed you how to do things correctly and how you're supposed to yep. conduct yourself. And, and, like and how to teach the younger guys. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm young. I've 
seven years as a young guy is hard, definitely, because we got older guys that when you're a captain at 26. I mean, you don't have to tell me that, but you're. I get it. I don't Yeah, you you have people that look down on you and they're 40 or 30 and they're like, well, you're telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen, kind of deal. Or seniority guys that think they have seniority, but they don't show up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, put the heart in the the game because it's about saving lives and making sure you're there when they need you, not just a T-shirt. So you're saying that it's not just about the T-shirt. Yes. Or the radio strap. Or the radio strap. Or the plastic helmet. Hmm. Radio strap could stay at the firehouse sometimes. (laughs) You have any memorable moments from your your, uh, time in the firehouse? I would, as of, like, training or calls. Anything. I mean, when my mentor, he would train us, and he would teach us everything with aerial operations, ground ladders, hose operation, pumping, driving. And I think that would be more memorable. 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 And uh, just how he cared about the younger guys and trying to get them up to speed on being effective and able to place that apparatus, drive that apparatus, pump it with multiple lines. and So he's just the way that he cared. and, and The way he cared about everything. And the way that he taught it yes. and explained uh, everything yep. and took the time to make sure that you understood it and... And he he was a hands-on guy too, so it was it was nice because I learned hands-on. Knowing he will teach me, he won't just talk to me and say, "Hey, this is how we do it." It's how, listen, take that line, hook it up, let's go, let's do it. You do it, not him showing me do it. Right. You do it, and that's how you're gonna learn. So you have any any you have any. Uh you have any messages for guys coming into the fire service or trying to come into the, you know, the emergency vehicle upfitting industry? Yeah, if you're going to fire yourself, one reminder, keep your mouth shut and open your ears because I've learned you're going to listen a lot more when your mouth is shut and you're trying to discuss things back and forth. Maybe just listen a little bit and then, and then you could... Don't go jumping the gun and saying you want you want to uh, have a reaction. Take the information in and then uh, react to it because there's a lot of people that just take the information and they're ready to react on it. They're not thinking about what the other person's saying. They're just reacting. So, and the brotherhood, the brother. I mean, ever since I'm in the fire service, the brotherhood's been tight and. Everybody's had your back. And that's all that we're going to have for you today with uh, Nicholas.